Kicking off at number five, Hoya Bakiu Forest, Romania. Purportedly the most haunted forest in the world, which is arguable, but is definitely the most haunted forest in Romania. Although they do have the whole Transylvania thing too, so I don't even know what to think anymore. Situated near Cluj Napokia, the Hoya Bakiu Forest covers an area of over 250 hectares and has fervently been referred to as the Bermuda Triangle of the country. It carries the reputation of being the location of thousands of ghost sightings, unexplained apparitions, disembodied faces appearing in photographs, and even a hotspot for UFO activity. Its most notorious feature is what the locals call the dead zone, an inexplicable clearing in the forest that is completely devoid of vegetation. A nearly perfect circle deep in the center of the woods where nothing has grown for centuries. Soil samples have been taken of this site and even local geologists have claimed that there is no explanation for the lack of vegetation, which is worrying. Right. Granted, while a lot of the mystery surrounding the forest has been exaggerated by local legend, there's something not quite right about this place. The mystery continues. Coming in at number four, the Black Forest, Germany. I mean, this place literally got its name from being a dark, ominous, creepy tangle of wood and thorns. And then we had the old brothers Grimm who took one look at this place and thought, this place is creepy, let's write some fairy tales about it. Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood, they are the folk legends that they are because of the sinister dread of the Black Forest. Don't get me wrong, this place is beautiful and a breathtaking sight to behold, but beneath the surface are some truly hair-raising tales. Take the legend of the Frey Schutzen, for example, arcane marksman of legend that was said to have retreated into the forest to make a pact with the devil. Well, they never made it out alive, but instead were bound to the forest, shooting at intruders with demonic accuracy. Then there's the wolf of Fraudenstadt, an elusive beast that always managed to catch a sheep without being seen. When a farmer stayed awake to catch it one night, he managed to shoot the wolf, and the next morning, a villager was found lying in his bed, covered in blood with a gunshot wound to his back. The Black Forest has been a high for European folktales and urban legend and a mystical reminder that not everything may be as it seems. Next up at number three, the Devil's Tramping Ground, North Carolina. I mean, it's kind of in the name, but it seems that the entirety of North Carolina has an obsession with naming things after the devil. Devil's Rock, The Devil's Courthouse, Seven Devils, Kill Devil Hills, Devil's Branch, Devil's Chimney, Devil's Nest, Devil's Knob, Hell, even the Devil's Potato Patch, and of course, the Devil's Tramping Ground. Strangely enough though, this forest bears a striking resemblance to that of the Hoya Baku Forest in Romania, and the Tramping Ground itself is a strange, unexplained, barren patch of earth where nothing grows. As the local legend goes, the place itself was the site of a battle between two rival tribes of Native Americans. Supposedly, the blood of those killed soaked the ground so thoroughly that nothing would ever grow there again. Allegedly, not even a single blade of grass will grow in the limits of the circle, seeds have been sowed there that refuse to sprout, and otherwise healthy transplanted plants wither and die within a few days. Obviously the local legend has mutated into varying versions throughout the course of history, but one thing remains the same. No one really knows what on earth is going on at the Devil's Tramping Ground. Swinging in now at number two, Epping Forest, England. Of course, we've got to throw England somewhere in this mix, and there's nowhere more notorious than Epping Forest in Essex. Although the home of many alleged paranormal sightings, the real matter of fact is that Epping Forest is the grisly site of over 15 murders, perhaps more, and has notoriously been used as the hideout and retreat for murderers and criminals throughout British history. Throughout the Iron Age, the forest itself is thought to be the location for numerous Roman battles and is thought to be a candidate for the unknown final resting place of Boudicca, queen of the British Iceni tribe. Allegedly, her ghost walks amongst the dense thicket at the deepest part of the wood. Epping Forest was also used as a hideout for the infamous highwayman Dick Turpin, who had retreated into the forest following a string of robberies alongside the likes of other famous highwaymen such as Tom King and Sixteen String Jack. In more recent times, though, Epping Forest has seen a series of brutal and tragic murders. In the 1970s, two children were found dead in a copse near Lippitz Hill, which would eventually become known as the Babes in the Wood Murders, a tragic case that deeply affected the nation. Epping Forest is unparalleled in its violent and grisly significance, and it's a place where I definitely wouldn't like to take a stroll through later at night. And finally, our number one spot, the Pine Barrens, New Jersey. 
without a doubt the most haunted and well just straight up weird place in America. There are so many folk legends surrounding the New Jersey Pine Barrens that it's hard to pinpoint exactly where to begin, but there is one tale that supersedes all others. The legend of the Jersey Devil and the Pine Barrens most notorious resident. Although its origins are unclear, the most widely held belief of the Jersey Devil begins with a Mrs. Leeds, a resident of Estelleville, a town which borders the Pinelands. When she found out that she was pregnant for the third 13th time, in disgust, she cried out, Let it be the devil. Well, when the baby arrived, that's exactly what it was, and it gave a screech, unfolded its wings, and flew out the window into the dense and desolate Pine Barrens. The creature has allegedly haunted the Pine Barrens for over 250 years, and locals, affectionately known as Pineys, consider its sightings to be too numerous to explain away as fiction. It doesn't end there, though, because the Pine Barrens harbour many more creepy tales than just the Jersey Devil. Captain Kidd, the headless ghost of a Scottish sailor, the ghostly visage of the black dog, the golden haired girl, Girl, the ghost of James Still, the white stag, the blue hole. There is a hell of a lot of creepy stuff in New Jersey, and all of it pretty much happens in the Pine Barrens. Number three in this list is the Pokiani Forest. The Pokiani Forest is located in Latvia and needs to be thought of as a potential hiding spot for the devil. The reason is there might be a secret hidden portal to hell right there. CN Traveler says there's nothing particularly strange about Pokiani Forest at first glance until you notice the mysterious heaps of moss covered rocks. These piles are strewn randomly throughout the forest causing much speculation and folk tales among visitors. Some claim that the forest is an old site for pagan rituals and it now has the mystic ability to heal people. Visitors even bring offerings to the stones to enhance their powers. Other visitors though attribute more sinister qualities to the forest, believing it to be a gateway to a parallel universe. There are reports of people suffering and even dying shortly after leaving the woods and locals warn that stealing a rock will end in a stint of bad luck. It's that parallel universe and the rituals that interest me here. I think that there's actually a lot more going on at this forest than meets the eye. That having this be an innocent normal collection of trees is what some people want you to think. I was reading up on this and it seems that there could have been a lot of satanic rituals performed here back in the day. Is it possible that maybe one of those rituals actually worked? That they were able to open a portal to hell and release Satan? And now the devil uses this forest as a way to travel between the two worlds? I'd ask you guys to go check it out for yourself, but that probably wouldn't be the safest, so we may never know. Number two on this list is the Yawata no Yabushiraza Forest. That is one heck of a mouthful, so from here on out, we're gonna call this forest YNY. YNY is located in Japan and is apparently one of the country's most haunted spots. That's a pretty big title to hold because Japan is full of haunted locations and scary sites. This forest is particularly bad though because entering it could mean the end of your life. There is an extensive history with this forest and people disappearing. For some reason, when people go into this forest, they don't often come out. It's thought that their souls get spirited away to a faraway land. Now let's think about this for a second. Why or how could something like this be happening? Well, maybe the devil is chilling out in these woods and those souls are actually getting spirited straight down to hell. No one's been able to think of a logical explanation behind the disappearances, but the devil seems to make the most sense to me. This is a deep and lush forest, perfect for hiding, and whenever anyone comes in here, the devil just takes them away. I hope it's not true, but it very well could be. Number five on this list is the Yosemite National Park. This massive forest is located in California, and if it wasn't so bloody haunted, it would probably be pretty beautiful. CN Traveler says, Yosemite National Park is beloved for for its epic waterfalls and giant groves, but there are areas of the park that might give you a different kind of goosebump. For example, some visitors who have hiked into the Chilnualna Falls trailhead reported hearing the distinct sound of someone crying. Native American folklore attributes the cries to a boy who drowned in nearby Gross Lake. His spirit calls out for help, but any hikers who venture into the lake will get pulled under and drown. Another Native American legend claims that some of the waterfalls in the park are haunted by an evil wind that draws people to the edge of the falls and then blows them off the cliff. A wind that draws people to the edge of the falls and then blows them off the cliff. Huh, sounds to me like something evil might be going on here. Maybe even the work of the devil. 
I'm not sure who that child was and if that legend was actually true or not, but having a wind hypnotize people to the point where they jump off a cliff, that doesn't happen every day, guys. Also, let's circle back to that story with the child. Well, how did he drown? It, it's possible that it could have just been an accident, I'm sure, but is there something else afoot? Maybe whatever creature calls to people from the cliff also calls to them from the water too. That would be very similar to the urban legend of the water babies where there are literal children who died in the water and now try to lure others to their death in said water. Maybe that's what this child is doing now. However, I also think it's possible that there is no child at all involved here. No water babies or anything like that. It could just be one entity doing all of this nonsense. Maybe the devil's hiding out here and it really was him all along. Number three on this list is the Smolensky Forest. This is a forest in Russia that is just riddled with tragedy. Reader's Digest says, in 1943, at the height of World War II, German troops invaded the Smolensk forest and discovered a mass grave containing thousands upon thousands of dead Polish soldiers. Ultimately, it was determined they'd been massacred on Joseph Stalin's orders. If the presence of 20,000 lost souls wasn't enough to frighten people away, then the tragic plane crash that took place in 2010, which killed 96 Polish political, military, and business leaders, hammered the nail into the often, so to speak. Horrible, guys. Just a horrible place that has seen some horrible things. I don't think that anybody would be shocked if the devil popped up here and just appeared to be hiding out in this Russian forest the whole time. Obviously, to any regular human being, that wouldn't be a place that you'd want to go, but I imagine the devil probably be loving it. Number two on this list is the Daring Woods. Another English forest here, and another one that features a highwayman. CN Traveler says, The Daring Woods are commonly referred to as the Screaming Woods, or, you know, a perfect place to host your next family camping trip. Visitors report hearing blood-curdling screams coming from the forest depths at night, as well as footsteps and whispers on foggy days. The screams are often attributed to a highwayman who was captured and killed by villagers in the 18th century, and whose ghost apparently still holds quite the grudge. Others believe the hauntings are the result of a 1948 massacre where 20 people were supposedly found dead in the forest the morning of November 1st. Residents reported seeing strange lights emanating from the woods that Halloween night and autopsies of the bodies couldn't determine a cause of death. 20 people dead in one place in a horrible massacre. The devil might not still be here, but we can say for sure that he was during that horrible tragedy. It's also very possible that a forest like this, one that has had such a bad tragedy, would attract the devil. Apparently it's super foggy here all the time as well, which is probably just another good reason to want to hide here. Daring Woods in England is one that should definitely be avoided, I think, guys. And finally, number one on this list is the Okigahara Forest. This is one of the most infamous forests in the entire world and has a horrible reputation to it. Seeing Traveler says, This seemingly serene forest at the foot of Mount Fuji has a tormented past. Colloquially known as Suicide Forest, Okigahara has had the world's second highest rate of suicides after the Golden Gate Bridge in 2010 alone. 247 people attempted to take their own lives and 54 of them were successful. Some blame this trend on the forest's association with demons in Japanese mythology. Others point towards the density of the trees, which muffles sound and makes it easier to get lost. In fact, many hikers will mark their path with tape or string to make it easier to find their way back out. The sprinkling of clothing and letters left throughout the labyrinth-like woods gives Okigahara that extra touch that will leave you in a cold sweat. Now one thing that CN Traveler doesn't even mention here is Yobatse. Yobatse is a horrible practice where people will take the elderly or the sick out into the middle of nowhere and just leave them there. This apparently used to happen a lot in Japan and still does happen to this day. If you can't take care of your grandma anymore, no worries, just take her into the forest and leave her there. It is a truly horrible, horrible thing that happens here regularly. Either way, this forest is super messed up and it seems like the perfect spot for the devil. Why is there such a high number of people taking their own lives? Why is it so eerie? Why do people take the elderly and leave them out here? Maybe it's because the devil is playing with their minds. You enter this forest feeling one way, you walk out completely different, if, of course, you're one of the lucky ones enough to walk out. 
I'd avoid this forest at all costs, folks. It may have the devil lurking inside. Number five on this list is the Pine Barrens Forest. The Pine Barrens Forest is haunted by something big and something deadly. Something that everybody in the region is aware of and would not want to run into by themselves. The Jersey Devil. CN Traveler says the heavily forested Pine Barrens spans over 1 million acres in 7 counties in New Jersey. The area thrived during the colonial area, host to sawmills, paper mills, and other industries. People eventually abandoned the mills and surrounding villages when coal was discovered to the west in Pennsylvania, leaving behind ghost towns and some say a few supernatural wanderers. The most popular Pine Barrens resident is without a doubt the Jersey Devil. According to legend, the creature was born in 1735 to Deborah Leeds, her 13th child, with leathery wings, a goat's head, and hooves. It flew up the Leeds chimney and into the barrens, and it's been killing livestock and creeping out South Jersey residents ever since. This is one of the most famous urban legends in America. It's been spotted by many people over the years and isn't something that you want to trifle with. Dogs have been killed and taken, livestock consistently gets targeted, and there have even been stories of a young child as well. Whatever the Jersey Devil is, it's not human. It's far more devilish and demonic like than that of a human. It would take a lot of money before I considering going into this forest. Number four on this list is the Black Forest. Ever heard of the Brothers Grimm? Two German academics who published folklore together but were also reported to have been involved in some pretty paranormal stories. To get an idea of what I'm talking about, Matt Damon and Heath Ledger do a pretty good job playing them in the 2005 movie entitled The Brothers Grimm. Well, either way, this forest, the Black Forest, was the setting for a lot of their antics or stories that they would tell. Trip Savvy says, Legend holds that it is haunted by werewolves, witches, and even the devil. The tale of Der Grossman is that of a tall, horribly disfigured man with bulging eyes and many arms. Bad children who entered the forest were made to confess their sins to him, and the worst children were never found again. The story of Die Gensmegde tells of a princess on her way to meet the prince in a faraway kingdom. But the maid accompanying her had ill intentions and forced the young princess to trade places with her. The maid took her magical steed, a talking horse called Falada, and when they arrived at the castle, the false princess had Falada killed to hide her misdeed and the real princess work as a goose girl. The real princess has Falada's skull hung over the city's gate, earning the attention of the king. She tells her story and he punishes the false princess by rolling her around the city in a spiked barrel until she died. So yeah, there's been some death in this forest before. It's also just so darn dark as well. Like I know that doesn't automatically make something haunted, but it is extremely hard to navigate this forest. Whether it be because of something paranormal or because of the light and other factors, people often get lost in this place. A lot of these people that get lost as well never end up coming out either. Something is in this forest. The Romans knew it. The Brothers Grimm knew it. And the locals who frequent the region, they know it as well. I would need an entire team to go with me if I ever was to enter this forest, and even then, I'm not sure I would. Number three on this list is Cameron Park. A park located in Texas that is quite beautiful if it weren't for the killer ghosts lurking within it. CN Traveler says, Waco's Cameron Park has several spots that are reported to be paranormal hot zones, including Jacob's Ladder, a treacherous set of stairs haunted by a grabbing ghost who tug on climbers' clothes to pull them down. But perhaps the most well-known site is the Witch's Castle, a name given to crumbling ruins found deep in the park. According to one story surrounding the castle, and there are many, the ruins are the former house of a woman suspected of witchcraft in the late 1800s. Waco residents blamed the woman after people began disappearing in the surrounding woods, so they formed a mob and burned down her house while she was still inside. Some people claim to see the witch's figure wandering through Cameron Park today, even chasing down some unlucky visitors. This is a cold-blooded killer. She will pull you off your climb and watch as you fall to your death. She loves to kill. She loves the feeling of hurting people. This is a ghost that needs to be stopped. I sure as heck am not going to be the one doing it, but some team, some group, some organization of some kind has got to get it together and go in there and deal with this. 
Whoever the real life Ghostbusters are, this is for you. Cameron Park should be a place where people go to experience nature, not get killed by an evil witch spirit. Number two on this list is Angelina National Forest. What once was a thriving area with great potential has turned into a ghost filled zone with the paranormal. CN Traveler says back in the early 1900s, Angelina National Forest was home to a thriving sawmill town of over 1,000 people. The mill was sadly a beacon for disaster, getting hit by a hurricane in 1911 and then by a fire in 1914. Residents soon abandoned the area, leaving behind a tiny ghost town. The abandoned site is eerie in and of itself, as ghost towns are. But rumors of the paranormal up that creepiness factor a few notches. Hikers have claimed to hear the disembodied screams of a young woman, a former resident of the town who was killed in a freak accident while visiting her boyfriend at the sawmill. A few people have even spotted her ghost wandering around the dilapidated mill. Something about abandoned sawmills is just uber creepy, folks. Especially when we have the ghost of a girl who was killed walking around it. This forest had potential. The whole area had potential. That potential was never realized though, and now it's a shell of what it could have been. Unless somebody goes in here and rids the area of the spirits that haunt it, this place will always be a sad reminder of the past. Just for the record though, I'm not going to be the person who does the paranormal cleansing. And finally, number one on this list is Freetown Fall River State Forest. This forest might not only be haunted by stuff of this planet, but could be haunted by creatures from other planets as well. CN Traveler says, The Freetown State Forest sits smack dab in the Bridgewater Triangle, an area in southeastern Massachusetts swarming with paranormal activity, roaming specters, UFO encounters, and even Bigfoot sightings. Some believe that the forest's haunted history dates back to colonial times when settlers purchased the land, sacred burial grounds included, from the Wempanoag tribe. The transaction is said to have cursed the area, which has since been the site of satanic cult rituals and murders in the 1970s and 80s, as well as comparatively innocuous poltergeist and fireball sightings more recently. We literally have everything here, guys. Werewolves, satanic cults, murders, sacrifices, ancient burial grounds, and to top it all off, we got UFO sightings. This place is messed up. Sometimes there's just an area that for whatever reason attracts the evil and paranormal entities of the world. I'm pretty sure that's what we have here. And that's why I'm not going in by myself anytime soon.